If you take a panzer croc's head and give it a Rottweiler's body, a hyena's cunning and viciousness, you get a bone cruncher with brains and speed. The hyenodon was fleet-footed. He ran on his toes. Animals that run on their toes are very rapid. And a hyenodon did this. He ran like greased lightning through the badlands. Hyenodon was not only fast, but highly developed in other ways, as Jaffet Boyce discovered when he subjected a skull to modern medical imaging. A 30 million year old fossil meets 20th century technology. From these scans, Boyce has been able to accurately reconstruct the workings of the ancient assassin's sensory mechanisms. He's particularly interested in how Hyenodon compares to today's top predator, the lion. Using the lion's skull as a benchmark, he can measure the size of its olfactory bulb to determine the animal's sense of smell, and the size of its optic nerve to indicate its sensitivity to light. Now, these are the olfactory bulbs here, aren't they? The olfactory bulbs in the hyenodon are exceptionally large when compared to those of the lion. A predator's most important sense is the sense of smell. And in the hyenodon, it is even better developed than Boyce had ever imagined. And the opening where the optic nerves go in is also extremely large in the hyenodon compared to the lion. Lions hunt at night and have tremendous night vision. So Boyce and the doctor agree that hyenodon must have had superb night vision as well. Modern-day hyenas also feed at night. Their jaws exert a pressure of over 700 pounds per square inch. Hyenodon horridus was even bigger and better equipped. With its large teeth, it could crush the neck of any creature its size, rip the hide off an alligator, and neatly fillet a small animal in minutes. But Hyenodon was not the only predator haunting the Badlands. Its rival was a very weird cat. Now, cats had the same problem Hyenodons did. How are you going to kill something really big? What cats did was go abnormal. This is a normal cat, mountain lion. Massive killing teeth for holding onto your throat until you asphyxiate and strong jaw muscles. The saber-toothed cats of the Badlands did it differently. They have huge upper teeth, very sharp for slashing, weak jaw muscles, but, but they can open their mouth really wide and slash with their whole body and neck. If you're a cat like that, you can kill something 10 times as big as you are. A saber-tooth attacked its prey by stabbing at the neck to sever the windpipe or blood vessels. When it came to a showdown with Hyenodon, Jaffet Boyce has found spectacular evidence of who came out on top. Well, I was working on this big cat one night, and I got to thinking that these puncture marks in the skull started looking familiar. So I got a Hyenodon skull and placed it in here, and behold, they fit almost perfectly in the top of this skull. A cat was no match for a super snapper with a bad attitude and a big appetite. But the tables were about to be turned. Hyenodon's worst nightmare was lurking in the wings. In the Valley of the Uglies, this beast was a ton of sheer horror. Bob Bakker thinks it was one of the fiercest predators that ever existed. I'm talking about a meat eater that evolved from an omnivore, from a pig-like animal. I'm talking about the killer warthogs. This is Megochorus, with a huge bony wart below the eye. It had canine teeth, killing teeth bigger than a polar bear's, and jaws set so they could open to a right angle and snap down really quickly. Nothing 
ever has evolved as scary with fur as the killer warthogs. Archaeotherium, Megachorus, Dinohyus, killer warthogs all. For Hyenodon, a killer pig was a bad dream come true. A truly awesome predator, Dinohyus had a massive skull, not much smaller than the skull of a Tyrannosaurus rex. Killer hogs feasted on these miniature gazelle-like creatures, ancestors of the modern camel, but they were no cowards when it came to attacking larger beasts. A longtime observer of the Badlands, curator of the Denver Museum, Richard Stuckey, noticed a shift in the battle lines. As the climate changed in North America, so did the habitats. Tropical forests changed to savanna-like environments. In those open environments, animals evolved. They changed to avoid predators. They got very, very big. Towering over all other mammals were the thunder beasts, as big and bad and ugly as they come. Called brontotheres, they lived on the leaves and twigs of the forest. Not only did some of these animals get very big, but some became very swift runners. Others developed herd groups, like camels and rhinoceroses. Some, like the brontotheres, evolved large horns and evolved differences between the males and females. The males became larger to protect the groups of animals that lived out in these open areas. Fossils from the Valley of the Uglies reveal that size doesn't always equate with survival. Jaffet Boyce has discovered a graveyard where, 20 million years ago, during the Oligocene period, a herd of thunder beasts died by the thousands. This is a mass mortality of brontotheres sitting on top of this fossil stream bed, the ancient stream bed that flowed through the Badlands here. Imagine a huge migrating herd of brontotheres coming to a swollen flood stage river. River much like this modern river that mimics the fossil river which flowed through these Oligocene badlands. The brontotheres come to this swollen stream, attempt to cross it, are caught in the flood, swept downstream, whirled into an eddy where they create a log jam of carcasses. The same fate that awaits these modern wildebeest crossing the Mara River in East Africa. Today, the disaster that swept through the Badlands 